Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And we might have gotten some evidence that a big game will be ported over to the Nintendo Switch. This is rather expected, but this should really fuel the fire, and I think a lot of fans will be really happy about this one, so stick around for that. Also, we got another controversy to talk about today, and this time about the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 power gap. There has been a lot of back and forth on this topic over the last year, and we may have gotten some new information that puts the Xbox ahead. But there are still some questions surrounding that, so stay tuned for that as well. First though, let's go over some of the quick news starting off with a couple of delays. Yeah, unsurprisingly we got more delays to talk about, and this time from Ubisoft. They are delaying Rainbow Six Quarantine, which technically never had a release date, but it was expected for a 2020 release. I think most people kind of figured that wasn't going to happen anyways, considering we've heard next to nothing about quarantine, and there's only two months left of the year. I mean, they would have had to make an announcement rather soon, and that would be kind of odd to not hype up one of your bigger AAA games. The other delay though was Far Cry 6, and this game was one of the more highly anticipated launch window games for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. It was supposed to release on February 18th of 2021, but both Far Cry 6 and Quarantine have been moved to Ubisoft's next financial year. This means that it's being planned for a release between March of 2021 to March of 2022. With that said, we don't really have much information on when they expect these to be released. It's probably just going to be a few months, so I'd be looking at June to August, but I mean, you never know. They might try to wait for next holiday to try to maximize their profits during the shopping season. Either way, I do understand that this is disappointing for fans, but this is something we're probably going to need to get used to for a while. A lot of these companies are having work-related issues with people working from home, and it's just difficult. That is understandable, and hopefully when they're finished, they'll be good games. Also, we got an update on Call of Duty Cold War, and those file sizes are getting pretty ridiculous by this point. Yeah, Cold War will be up to 250 gigabytes on the PC. That is absolutely insane, but the good news is that you will have options on what you install, and this could save you a lot of space. That 250 gigabytes is the RTX version, which includes 4K resolution, high frame rate, and ray tracing. If you really don't want ray tracing though, you do have the option of picking the competitive mode, which is more focused on frame rate, and that actually drops it down to 175 gigabytes. And they do have a less graphically demanding version with ray tracing as well, which again will be 175 gigabytes. That's still a lot, but it sounds much better than 250 gigabytes. But even then, if you're one of those players who just wants to play multiplayer, you can absolutely do that. The multiplayer will only be 50 gigabytes, so that is an option as well. In fact, one thing you can do is install the entire game, and once you beat the story, just uninstall it and keep the multiplayer version. That way you don't have that huge file taking up a large portion of your hard drive. And let's be honest, much of the Call of Duty community really only likes the multiplayer aspect of those games. Moving on, PlayStation announced their PlayStation Now lineup for the month of November, and starting on the 3rd, you will be able to play Injustice 2, Rage 2, My Time at Portia, Warhammer Vermintide 2, and Kingdom Come Deliverance. Yeah, this is an overall pretty solid month. You do have a few big AAA games here with some nice diversity. Kingdom Come in specific is a great RPG. It does have some technical issues on consoles, but it's one of the best western style RPGs developed within the last decade. It really is that good, especially with its story. However, Deliverance will only be available until May 3rd, so it's not going to be there for a super long time. I really would like to see them extend these type of deals to a year, that way you don't feel rushed to play through some of these games, but again, this is a solid month. Injustice is a really good fighting game, and Rage 2 and Vermintide should keep plenty of people busy. That's the thing about this service though, because I have noticed they have dramatically improved over the last year, and that's a good thing. Hopefully they continue to improve in that regard. Now also, Xbox revealed their Games with Gold games for the month of November, and I can't say the same thing about Games with Gold. They have not improved this service, and if anything, it seems to be getting worse. For the month of November, Games with Gold will get Origami Shadow Edition, Swim Sanity, Full Spectrum Warrior, and LEGO Indiana Jones. Yeah, not particularly a great month, but this seems to be pretty normal by this point. It's definitely not one of Xbox's strong points. 
I mean, they are free games if you do have Xbox Live Gold, but there's certainly a lot of room for improvement here. Let's talk about PlayStation VR for a moment though, because Jim Ryan made a very interesting statement regarding PlayStation VR. So let's take a look at what he had to say. I think we're more than a few minutes from the future of VR. PlayStation believes in VR, Sony believes in VR, and we definitely believe at some point in the future, VR will represent a meaningful component of interactive entertainment. Will it be this year? No. Will it be next year? No. But will it come at some stage? We believe that, and we're very pleased with all the experience that we've gained with PlayStation VR, and we look forward to seeing where that takes us in the future. Now, I've seen a lot of people debate on what this statement means. Some are taking this as confirmation that PSVR 2 won't be released this year or even next, while others take it as Sony not having confidence in virtual reality. But I actually see this as the complete opposite. To me, it does sound like Sony is confident in VR. And while yes, he does say that we're more than a few minutes from the future of VR, meaning it's not mainstream right now, he also quickly pointed out that they believe it will represent a meaningful component of interactive entertainment in the future. So the way I look at this statement is that even though VR isn't mainstream right now, they're going to continue to invest in it. I think his phrasing is a little odd and it comes off as a little unenthusiastic, but again, he did quickly point out that Sony believes in VR, and I think that's the bottom line here. And that's been clear for a while. They are one of the biggest virtual reality publishers right now outside of Valve and Oculus. As for PSVR 2 releasing soon, we have seen plenty of PSVR 2 patents, but it's hard to tell exactly when that will release. But I don't think that this quote is telling at all of when it will release. In other news, Nintendo may be getting a big game soon because we got more evidence that Crash Bandicoot 4 will be heading over to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, this shouldn't be overly surprising, but there was some INI files uncovered that reportedly has a Switch profile hidden within Crash 4. Of course, this just adds more fuel to the fire that Crash 4 will be coming to the Switch, and it's been widely rumored for a while. But there's always that question, could it possibly miss the Switch? Well, based off Activision's track record in the past, they did do something similar with the Crash Insane Trilogy and Spyro Reignited. They do tend to stagger their releases for the Switch, and this could be for a few different reasons. I'm sure that porting games to the Switch is easier said than done. They probably do need to do some extra work in order to get them to run on the Switch, but you know, I would like to see Activision at the very least reveal ahead of time that they're working on a port. There really is no need to hide that information, but they're probably doing that for fairly obvious reasons. I will however say this, Crash 4 is an excellent game, and in my opinion, one of the best this year. It really does feel like the original Crash games, it's very challenging, especially if you're trying to 100% it, and it's just one of the better 3D platformers probably ever made. I really like this game a lot, and I think Nintendo fans are absolutely going to love it. I know there's no confirmation that Crash 4 is coming to the Switch just yet, but I do think it's inevitable. The Switch is more than capable of running this game, and I think Activision is really going to want that boost in sales. From all signs so far, it doesn't sound like Crash 4 was a resounding success in terms of units sold, and a Switch version could really help it out. If it were me though, maybe Activision needs to take a look at that price. I think that's one reason people have been hesitant on buying Crash 4. It is $60, and considering the Crash Insane Trilogy was $40 on launch, maybe they should consider knocking that price down just a bit. Now we also got some interesting PlayStation 5 news today that seems to be confusing people just a bit. If you remember, not long ago Sony revealed that 99% of all the PlayStation 4 games that they've tested on the PlayStation 5 works via backwards compatibility. They did have a small list of games that didn't work such as Shadow Complex and 9 or so other games, but that list seems to be growing. Ubisoft put out a blog post today talking about Ubisoft Connect, and they revealed that several of their games will not be compatible with the PlayStation 5. This includes several Assassin's Creed games such as the Chronicles Trilogy Pack, Chronicles India, Chronicles China, Chronicles Russia, and Syndicate. There were also a few others like Risk, Star Trek Bridge Crew, Werewolves Within, and Space Junkies. So yeah, this was a little surprising to say the least. These games were not on the list Sony released, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate is a pretty big game. I am very interested to know why some games aren't working on the PlayStation 5, and I'm hoping we hear something from Sony on this matter. 
Maybe a simple update could fix this problem, but I definitely want to know more of what's happening here, and I'm hoping this list doesn't grow even more. On to our last bit of news though, we have some next generation controversy to talk about. One big topic really for the entire year has been about the power for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. There's always been that debate on whether or not we would actually see a difference in power between the two. Obviously, the Series X on paper is more powerful outside of the solid state drive, but would it translate into real life situations? Well, there were a few press releases that the game community is really focusing on right now. About a month ago, Ubisoft released a statement that said that Assassin's Creed Valhalla will run at 60 frames per second in full 4K resolution. The question is what does full 4K mean? Is this just marketing or does that mean it's native 4K resolution? The reason that's being so heavily focused on is because a Ubisoft PR representative is saying that the PlayStation 5 version is running at an upscaled 4K at 60 frames per second. That's not a true 4K, but to be fair, it still does look very good. A lot of people probably wouldn't notice the difference here, but if this is true, then we could be seeing a power gap between the two very early on in the generation. Now with that said, we only have these wording differences to look at right now, and I think that's important to keep in mind. For me personally, I want to hear what Digital Foundry finds, or even Ubisoft and if that full 4K means native 4K resolution or not. For me, I want a little bit more information on this before I jump to any kind of conclusions, but I know this information is out there, and it'll be interesting if we get an update for this in the next couple of days. I guess we'll see what happens, but if we do get some more information on this, I'll certainly let you know. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.